Hi. I've never tried this technology before, so I have no idea if anyone can see me or hear me. It's a new technology where supposedly I can go live to YouTube and Facebook at the same time and to my private groups. So I guess I won't know until I'm done unless somehow somebody types something. Well, if there is anybody watching this, I wanted to wish you a very happy Thanksgiving to you and all your loved ones. Oh, there's somebody named Jamonte Washington. That's interesting because it, it's, mm. let's see. Hey, it says that I'm live. So I guess I am live. So hello. So it's interesting because I wonder, like, if you guys are live from Facebook or YouTube, that oh my God, there's all these people. Hey, Linda. Hey, this is kind of cool because it's showing a little red icon, I guess, for people watching me on YouTube and a little blue one for people watching me on Facebook. Whoa. Hey, Barb. I was just talking about you the other day. Well, wow. Shit. Okay. This is working apparently. Well, this is really cool because if I can do this in the kitchen, I could be going because it's kind of difficult to think about having to do something on Facebook and then get it over here to YouTube. But this allows it all at the same time. And I'm hopefully broadcasting live to my Chef AJ page, to my Feel Fabulous Over 40 page, to my Ultimate Weight Loss page. Let's see, what other one? Oh, to my mastery page and to YouTube. So now that I have you here, what the heck should I talk about? I know this was really, this is a test. This is only a test. Actually, tomorrow's Black Friday. So I, a lot of people are saying, do you have a Black Friday special? And I do. And those of you that follow me closely that attended my recent webinar kind of know what it is, but it's really going to be unfolding tomorrow. So if you are not on my mailing list, consider getting on it. My website, I'll type it in here, is on process.com or www.chefajwebsite.com. Get on my mailing list because we're going to send it out tomorrow. Ah, oh, this is great. Karen says the Feel Fabulous page is working. Cooking your recipes now. Thanks for your uh, Thanks for the birthday text. Nice. Yeah, I'm cooking my recipes too. We were actually supposed to go to a friend's house in Orange County. Her name's Shada, Healthy Cooking with Shada. She makes the most delicious compliant Persian food. But there is a huge storm in Orange County and it's two hours away. We just, with rain, it would be probably three hours to get there. And so we didn't want to do that. I am very pixelated. I don't know how to fix that. Maybe that's on your end, Florence, because I look okay to me right here. Da, da, da. Picture is not in focus, Judy saying. Streaming is pixelated. Well, um, I don't know how to fix that, guys, because I'm. it's not looking that way to me. But maybe in a, I'll, I'll come to some of these pages and look at them afterwards. Give us hair care tips. <laughs> well, you have to have a good... So I got my hair cut yesterday. It's a little short, but it's going to grow out. So I actually uh, think that your hair is just an outgrowth of your health. So I think eating well is what's going to make your hair and your nails and your skin be as beautiful as possible. So I think eating a diet high in antioxidants and phytochemicals and micronutrients, which is basically the health promoting diet of Dr. Ellen Goldhammer, or the ultimate weight loss diet, a preponderance of your calories from fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes is going to manifest in your hair, your skin, and your nails. So as far as product, uh, you know, I, you know, with short hair, it, it almost kind of doesn't matter. It's at least for my look, it's it's the it's the little gel and the flat iron that you use afterwards. But that's what I would imagine is going to be the health from the outside is going to be what you're eating on the inside. And you eat really well, Jane. So I'm sure you have beautiful hair. So you are. I'm very pixelated. I don't know what to do about that because oh, somebody's in Sweden. That's very cool. Do you guys have any questions? This is actually was just a test because I was going to go live tomorrow to announce my Black Friday special. But since apparently this technology works, I could actually use it for cooking demos and stuff. So anyway, I, I canceled on my dear friend Shada because she understood we didn't want to be in the car six hours, three hours there, three hours back in the pouring rain. So I'm basically making everything I showed you guys in the Thanksgiving webinar, except that there was no acorn squash left in the desert. I guess everybody watched my webinar and bought up all the acorn squash. So I'm doing it with butternut squash and it'll be delicious. The thing about butternut squash is the little hole that you stuff is much smaller than the acorn squash. So you have to take some of the, some of the, the meat or the flesh out of the butternut squash to fit the stuffing back in. So that'll be the only difference. So yeah, this is interesting. I see it doesn't really say like how many people are watching. What's this little button here? Oh, that's a, 
Wow, I guess. Okay, I don't know what I did there. Let's close that. Bailey, you want to come say Happy Thanksgiving to everybody? What are you guys doing for Thanksgiving? Anything special? Is this the day where they have football games? I don't know because, I, you know, I stopped watching TV. It's so weird. It's like I haven't watched TV since I moved here January 26th, and so I don't even know what's going on in the world. So it's, it's kind of freeing to not watch television. Let me tell you, you have a lot more time in your day when you stop watching television. Now, that doesn't mean I don't watch anything. I have an iPhone. I have Netflix and Amazon Prime. Uh, that's what I do when I spin. So the only way I can watch a show is if I'm on the bike. And I'm currently in season two of Schitt's Creek. So it makes me want to exercise. But I haven't watched regular TV. And I, it, it's it, with the new channels I just gave up. And on the new remote, it's like it's just, it's just easier not to watch television. You know, I do miss Jeopardy, though. But I do play it every day with Alexa. So, all right. Well, if there's no questions or anything or comments. Hi, Angie Ramsey. This is cool. So it looks like it's look like it's about an even. It looks like more people are watching from YouTube than from Facebook. And Denise is staying home making her own meals. Fort Myers are, is in the house. I've been to Fort Myers actually. Yeah. So this is interesting. So good technology. So this is good to know. It makes it a lot easier to do one broadcast than to have to go to all the various pages and everything. Oh, new message. What does that say? Is uh, Bianca says, is walnuts and seeds good if you're underweight and not? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, there's nothing wrong with eating whole food plant fats like nuts, seeds, avocado, and coconut. It's just that if you are struggling with food addiction or trying to lose weight, these are the foods that are highest in caloric density. You know, seeds are about 2,600 calories a pound, nuts about 3,200 calories a pound. But if you're overweight and not, and not, like, these aren't trigger foods for you, absolutely eat them. But also, you might just need to eat more food, particularly starch, and you might need to do some some muscle work, you know, some resistance training or strength training to gain weight that way. Okay. You, YouTube sent a notification to my home screen. That's how, oh, hey, Jen, how you doing? So at first there were no comments and all of a sudden, yeah. Um, so that's kind of cool. So let's see if the newer comments are on the bottom or the top. I'm making vegan, vegan uh, Sherry says I'm making vegan potatoes, grain, and lots of asparagus for my supper. That sounds delicious. Let's see if there's any other questions. I really need to wear glasses but I'm too vain. See, this is what I would look like if I put my glasses on. And then, you, then you're going to know I'm 60 for sure. But I do see better with them, at least reading glasses. Do you do any spiritual practices for Thanksgiving? You know, I mean, I kind of live, I try to live a life of kindness and compassion. I don't have like anything that's more like religious where like I do stuff. But I think my my daily yoga practice is it's a I do what's called yin yoga. It's more meditative and reflective and restorative. So that's when I'm quieting my mind and, and being grateful. So um, that's kind of what I do every day. So I don't really have anything special that I do for Thanksgiving. If I was with a group, I would probably do this exercise that I've done Thanksgiving when I've been with people. This is my first Thanksgiving because we because we were invited and then we decided to cancel because of the. Uh, of the weather. Now, this will be my first time actually alone with just my husband. So that'll be interesting. But what I've done, and maybe I'll just do it with him and my dog Bailey, is I've gone around the room and everybody says what they're thankful for in relation to the other person. And because assuming, assuming they know the person. So that can be fun. And somebody actually gave me a gratitude jar for Thanksgiving. So that'd be kind of cool to fill out. You've put the things on these little pieces of paper. Happy Thanksgiving from Southern New Jersey. Ooh, it must be cold there, guys. Okay, won't be driving in the rain. I know I won't. Watching football today, Barb. <laughs> Tried acorn squash for the first time and loved it. So, Pam, if you cook the acorn squash in the instant pot, like I recommend, it's the most lovely nectar. We call it pot liquor, but from the squash, it's it's even better than from the greens. So, did I want that? Okay. Staying home, making your own meals as it should be. Thank you for your good Thanksgiving wishes. Cleared a little bit. Yeah, the weather, it's going to be bad. I'm making lentil loaf. No, I'm making, I'm making the a stuffed butternut squash that I made in the webinar. So let's see what else. Maybe blurry with YouTube. Yeah, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. It's, it, guys, I don't know what to do on my end. This is my, I mean, I pay, you know, I paid a lot for this technology. It's my first time using it, but I'm going to have to ask my friend and business partner, Toby, if he could maybe troubleshoot it. There's a, like a lot of buttons here. So you are out of focus on Facebook also. So maybe we can complain to customer service. Hey, hey, there's a little button here. I don't know if they're open right now. 
Oh, start a conversation. You don't think I can do it while we Okay. I don't know if customer service is open on Thanksgiving day. Okay. Uh, but Jane wanted hair care tips. Just get a good hairdresser. You know, that's, that's really important. I think to get one that you like new message. I'm making nutmeg notebooks, lentil shepherd pie. Yeah, that looks amazing. I have a real hard time with, with legumes, beans, split peas, and lentils, but I love the idea of putting mashed potatoes on everything. I think I'm going to do another cooking webinar for Christmas, and it's going to be based on mashed potatoes. So I can't tell if it's the top comments or the bottom comments. To roast carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, and zucchini, should I, should I separate them? So, yeah, because the zucchini, either you have to separate them, or you have to cut them so that the high water ones like onion and zucchini are much bigger because carrots and parsnips, things like that, they're, they're not, they're still non starchy vegetables, but they're, they're a lot more dense and they're lower in water. So I would recommend, you know, maybe, or, or putting them in first. You don't necessarily have to roast them separate, but maybe give them 20 minutes ahead of the zucchini or, or it depends how you cut them. So you never eat anything with oil. Um, not since August 1st, 2008, I, not on purpose anyway. Um, I actually did have a little oil. I was at my mother-in-law's funeral and there were some uh, roasted vegetables with oil and I did eat it and I got very sick. So oils for cars, not for people. I've written two books about it now and it's uh, atherogenic diabetes, diabetic diabetogenic and atherogenic, diabetogenic and obesogenic, which means it contributes to obesity, heart disease and diabetes. So I don't eat it at all, at least intentionally. That's why I don't go to restaurants. It's also very calorically dense at 4,000 calories a pound. Hi, Linda. And I just got a text from you, so I didn't see it. For, for us, the bottom comments are the most current. Thank you, Libby. Okay. Love your Caesar dressing. Listen, it's not my recipe. It's Miyoko Shinner's, but unless it's the one in the book, but thank you so much. I look fine with glasses. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. They're, they're kind of annoying though. Um, so yeah, I would do the carrots and brought the carrots first. Uh, they're the thickest in the bro and then the cauliflower and then because the broccoli and zucchini can actually burn. So you could separate those by trays as well. It is, it is a little, uh, when you're roasting vegetables of different density, you have to figure out, you know, th there's going to be a learning curve with there. Did, no, I didn't watch Macy's Parade because I don't watch TV. I'm trying to get a whole year uh, under my belt with no television and I've done it since January 26th. So I, I didn't watch it. So um, I just, you know, I don't have time to watch TV. The only way I can watch is if I'm on, if I'm doing something else like exercising and I really don't have time to exercise more than an hour a day. And like when, when I get into a really good show like Mrs. Maisel or I just watched Barry or now I'm doing Schitt's Creek, it's like, then I, that, that's the only way I get to exercise exercise. It's looking better. It's looking a lot better now here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, like, again, I'll watch the replay. I'll contact customer, ser customer service, realize this is the first time I'm doing this. Love you, Chef AJ. Thank you. Tube tart. That's a cute name. And, uh, and, and we'll, we'll get this worked out because I did want to go live tomorrow to announce my, my, uh, Black Friday special. If you're not on my mailing list, please get on it. Cause I just, it's, it's really hard to sometimes tell you everything because I don't always remember to go live or put it on Facebook or put it on YouTube. But if it's really important, we always send it out to our mailing list. And we don't, we don't just like sell, sell, sell. We basically, you know, we send out recipes or tell you about summits and stuff. And by the way, the screen behind me, the real truth about weight loss summit, that's because I'm gearing up for another one. We did it this year and we had over 50,000 people registered. We hope to get more this year. We're adding a lot of new speakers, including Dr. Barbara Rolls, who's the mother of calorie density, who's done more research on the field of calorie density than any other human. I just did my interview with her. A lot of the speakers like Dr. Furman one and Dr. McDougal, I've already done new interviews with them. So it's going to be a lot of the same speakers doing new interviews, but a lot of new speakers as well. And so that doesn't air on YouTube or Facebook. So you would have to sign up and that's we'll, we'll get more information on that that won't be till february but that's why this screen is up instead of the usual chef aj screen so um switch to watching you on youtube since i'm going to start well that's very interesting that you can switch you know um hi from a very cold and wet old ham in the uk just trying to get my head around your recipes we're going to have a darn good try need to lose six times 14 pounds we work in stones and so so do you need to lose 60, 84 pounds? I don't know stones much. I did watch one of those British weight loss shows and 
in a uh, do you weigh less in stones cindy williams that's isn't that the name wasn't that the name of an actress on on a show looking forward to palm springs it's really nice what nuts and seeds do you recommend in starches so if you're if you're trying to lose weight i don't recommend any overt fats not just oil but no nuts seeds avocado at least while you're losing probably the healthiest seed is well not probably the healthiest seed would be flax seeds chia seeds ground on and uh, raw not roasted i don't know if you can even get roasted those so i recommend those and I recommend them, uh, you know, a tablespoon a day is usually enough on your salad or in your oatmeal. I recommend all starches, all gluten-free starches, that is fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes. This time of year, the squashes, the delicata, the hubbard, the acorn, the butternut, the kabocha, they're the lowest in caloric density, about 200 calories a pound, and they're delicious. A nice Thanksgiving blessing hearing from Chef AJ. That's so nice. It'd be interesting to know like where, because you guys, it's showing F for Facebook, but are you watching me on my Chef AJ page? Are you watching it on Feel Fabulous? Uh, if, by the way, if you're not in Feel Fabulous, try it. It's free. I mean, it's not free forever. It's like $12 a month because we do a lot of content. And we have to pay the doctors, but it's, if you join for a year, it's $12 a month, but you can try two, year, two, two weeks for free. And there's every week we add another, we do another live video. We've got Dr. Lyle every he was he's great by the way he's coming back on wednesday and lots of other doctors and we've been interviewing a lot of you know people for success stories do you know anything about whole foods vegan pumpkin pie tucker asks i i don't know anything i i would imagine that it is truly vegan if they sell it but i'm sure it's got flour and, and oil or butter or, or some kind of vegan shortening and i'm sure it has sugar and i'm sure it's very very delicious and whole foods is actually open today uh, Renee. Hi, Chef AJ. Thank you for everything. You're welcome. I'm 66. Be proud you made it. Don't deny it. You're special. Yeah, no, I just, I'm vain. What can I tell you? And, uh, you know, I luckily I don't have to wear glasses full time, you know, because I had that surgery a long time ago, the radial keratotomy. That was before they were doing the laser. So they didn't need to wear glasses because I wore glasses from the age of seven. And part of it, it's not even vanity. I find glasses extremely uncomfortable and you get the little thing in your nose and the ear. So, um, and I couldn't wear contacts because they kept falling out, but um, I just kind of find them annoying. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm, -dum -bum. you are 58. Well, very good. Oh, I'm about to make your beanless bean burgers. Yeah, those are my favorite, Marsha. And I thought about doing something kind of like nutmeg notebook shepherd pie, but having the bottom be the beanless bean burger and then putting a layer of mashed potatoes on top. I just couldn't figure out if I would cook it first and then add the mashed potatoes or cook the whole thing together because I worried if I put the mashed potatoes on top, the bottom wouldn't cook. So that was a, that was something I've been banging around in my head. Where are your glasses? It's not clear on our end anyway. Okay, 60 as a kid, I'm 71. I'm roasting Brussels sprouts in the drizzle of balsamic glaze. Beth F, are you Beth F like my Beth F or a different Beth F? Are sugar snap peas a vegetable? You know, they are technically, I believe, classified as a legume, but but we also consider them a non-starchy vegetables. Is, is it's not unhealthy to eat nuts and seeds. It's not unhealthy at all. They're very, they're very healthy. They're just very high in fat and very calorically dense. Da -da -da -da. Okay. I love the hearts. So if there's no more questions, what am I going to, I haven't even eaten my vegetables yet. Um, Replanet says, I'm a big fan here in Dallas, Texas. Thanks for giving yourself. Thank you. You know, I've spoken in Dallas quite a few times. Gustavo, who I've done some webinars with, used to work there. Yeah, Cindy Williams was on Laverne and Shirley. So Cindy Williams, are you that Cindy Williams or a different Cindy Williams? Uh, Lisa says, thanks for doing this, Chef AJ. You inspire me every day. So no nuts and seeds or tahini until we reach our goal. Is that what I recommend? Yeah. And I also recommend that you watch the YouTube that I literally put on at 12, 15 a.m. this morning with Dr. Lyle. It's really important, Lisa, because he talks about how everybody's different genetically and how it, it, there are some people like me and other people I work with that are women that when we add any amount of fat to our diet in any amount, even measured, we gain fat, we gain weight. In general, what you do to lose weight, lose weight must be continued because if you don't, it's, if it's not sustainable, it's not going to be permanent. So in other words, when most people go on a diet, they're doing some kind of restriction, counting calories, carbs, points, they're eating less food than is normal, natural, or desired. And they're eating usually specific foods and eliminating other foods. And then they lose weight through a great deal of suffering. And then they go back and adding in foods that they didn't eat to lose weight and they gain their weight back or the, or in amounts that they that are more than what they can tolerate for their caloric budget. And so 
my feeling working with, I've only worked with probably a couple of thousand people now, but my experience is, is that whatever you decide to do to lose weight, you have to continue after the weight loss is achieved. So you can't switch up the foods and say, well, you know, I've lost weight. Now I deserve a treat. Now I deserve a nightly glass of wine or a rich dessert. It's not going to work. So you have to find the dietary style that is enjoyable for you, that you're able to sustain it. Because if it's not sustainable, it won't be permanent. And that's why I've always told people ultimate weight loss is not for everyone. Ultimate weight loss is for people that have tried everything else and failed. It's basically the last stop on the train. If you're 20 years old with 10 pounds to lose, don't come to the ultimate weight loss program. I mean, you can for health because it's a very healthy diet. There are people that eat that way, like Dr. Goldhammer, who's eaten that way for 40 years, who's never been overweight or suffered from food addictions because it's, it's a very healthy way to eat. It's consistent with our species' natural history. The food is delicious. You don't have to measure it out. You can eat a libidum as much as you want, as often as you want. But it's for, for ultimate weight loss is for people for which nothing else has worked. It's because I know that up until I was 52 years old, I was fat. I was obese. And nothing had worked for me until then. So that said, though, it's just, you know, Einstein, I believe, said something to the effect of you don't solve tomorrow's problem by using the same mind yesterday that created it. I, I, I botched the quote, but it's you can't create a slender body with foods that you eliminated while you were on that journey. Does that make sense? And so my feeling is, is if you're somebody that wants to eat nuts and seeds and avocado and Ezekiel bread, eat them during your weight loss phase and figure out what amount you can eat. Because if you, if you go back and then add these foods, which are of a higher caloric density in any amount, you may not be able to maintain that weight loss. So again, I've said this since day one, do the least restrictive program that you can do but that will give you the results you want. The a problem is these more flexible approaches that allow a little bit of flour and a little bit of sugar and a little bit of high fat foods and a little bit of alcohol for many people, especially people that are women, women that are uh, you know menopausal, it doesn't give them the body that they want. It doesn't give them that lean slender body or the calm stable brain. So, you know, just, just choose wisely. Okay. That's what I did and it ended badly. <laughs> Hi, Jane. You're adorable. From Randy, all the cool equipment in my kitchen preparing for Thanksgiving comes from Chef AJ's idea. Instant Pot Pamper Chef Steiner, the onion chopper thing, the garlic thing. It's like a museum for Chef AJ. Thank you, Randy. And again, I just, I put, I, you know, I, I, I always resisted having an Amazon store. I do make a few pennies from it. But the reason I did it is because people kept asking me like, like, like 50 emails a day. Where do you get this? So everything is in this place now. It's amazon.com slash shop slash chef AJ. The only thing that's not in the Amazon store are things that aren't sold on Amazon, like the California balsamic vinegars, like um, the local spicery spices, um, like the Holland bowl mill, like the Hawaiian sweet potatoes. Otherwise, everything is uh, don't you need fat for hormones? Bianca, it's a very, it's impossible to be fatty acid deficient if you're eating enough calories. So yeah, you, you do need fat, but there's fat in lettuce that 1% of the calories in, in fruit is fat. 3% of the calories from green is fat. 20% of the calories from oat is fat, but the fat you eat is the fat you wear. So if you're wearing fat and don't want to wear it, stop eating it at least for a while just to see. How do I get on my mailing list? A zippy, we posted a link if you look up to my mailing list, which is Chef AJ website. You click this little box and we send you five recipes. So hopefully the pixelation has gotten better as we test this technology. And let's see if there's any other questions. Greetings from Hungary. Wow, that's cool. All right, let's see. Uh, what do you think about, yeah, stevia is horrible. Um, the artificial sweeteners like uh, aspartame, the zero calorie sweeteners like stevia, or erythritol, xylitol, mannitol, sorbitol, absolutely worse. First of all, every gastroenterologist you'll ever speak to will tell you that it's a nightmare for your microbiome and your gut, stevia. But the problem is, is where weight loss is concerned, it it's, it's worse because it provides zero calories, but because the taste buds on the tip of your tongue taste this artificial sweetness, what it does is it perpetuates the desire to eat more sweet. I, I know this because I just literally interviewed Dr. Furman about the same thing. So what happens is you get this taste of sweet, your brain thinks, oh, calories are coming, but they don't come. So it just makes you hungrier. So it's worse for weight loss, for weight management, and it's worse for food addiction because these artificial sweeteners, because most people that are eating stevia aren't just chewing on the leaf, they're powdering it into a 
highly processed refined powder or liquid and it goes through the same refining process as drugs and alcohol so again like please consider reading my book I mean you know you, you can get it for free it's in the library now secrets to ultimate weight loss I go into great detail of why these artificial sweeteners are bad why oils are bad I have um, 150 episodes of YouTube on Weight Loss Wednesday. The first 100 are not recipes, they're content where I talk about this. And if you're in Feel Fabulous Over 40, which you can join for two weeks free, actually I'll give you that link, there is this amazing search engine where it's called the Knowledge Vault, where like if you have a question for Chef AJ and I'm sleeping, you, talk, you type in the word stevia, and every time I've ever mentioned it in any video, it comes right up. It's pretty cool. Let me type the link. I hope you guys will try Feel Fab, I can't see, Fabulous Over 40.com slash register. Check it out. You can choose two weeks for free. You can see the knowledge vault. You can see we have a meal planner tool where you can customize your meal plan and it gives you a shopping list with my recipes and and weekly interactions with amazing guests. So that's pretty cool. Stop using Stevia. Stevia craved it for about two weeks. That's how you know it's addictive. The fact that you would have cravings. If you stopped using Brussels sprouts, I bet you wouldn't crave it. I just made your cranberry relish divine, says Kalina. Thank you. Yeah, I'm making it today. And um, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to add some some cherries that were fr organic, frozen, defrosted. I'm going to add some ginger. I'll let you know how that goes. Oh, greeting from Zaruba. I was in Aruba in February. They took my apple away. <laughs> they wouldn't let me go on the plane with it. After two weeks, whole food, plant-based, no oil, feeling great now in fifth week and so so tired. What can I do? I don't know if you're doing anything wrong. Maybe you're not eating enough calories, uh, you know. It, but you said, and so tired. You, I, wait, because you're saying you're feeling great, but you're saying you're so tired. So I don't know what your whole life day is like, but I think that maybe you're just not eating enough calories. So uh, that's what I would suggest is to see how maybe you're just not eating enough or you know, so I don't, I don't think there's something inherent in animal products that makes you untired, you know, so there, that, I mean, being tired is, there could be lots and lots of reasons and I'm not a doctor, but maybe consider seeing a plant-based one, even in Aruba, you can consult with any of the wonderful plant-based doctors at True North. It's $95 for a consult. Ruth Ruthless, I'm low weight, close to minimum BMI and can run a marathon, but my belly is big despite being thin. Yeah, I would, I would talk to one of the plant-based gastroenterologists. I would have a consult with either Dr. Angie Sadeki or Dr. Will B. They're both gastroenterologists, and uh, that's who I would talk to about that, and they, would, they will do consults. Okay, how do you make sure you're eating enough, that you have enough energy to get through your activities of daily living? I mean, you know, if you, if you don't have any energy, then you're probably not eating enough. You know, it's, it's um, you know, eating enough for what? You know, because somebody that's a construction worker that's that's training for a marathon is going to need to eat more than somebody that's sedentary, you know, that's 80 years old and four foot 10. So you, you because you're, you're not hungry, you have enough energy to get through your day. That's how I would say. Marcia says, thanks for the info and Stevio. Now I don't have enough sweet potatoes. We'll have enough for the beanless burgers. Um, I would, do you have another potato or any, you know, what, what you could do, Marsha, is it will probably work just fine, but if you have something else like a parson of a carrot, another kind of potato, I would put it in. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving to you, uh, Cassie. And I'm so wise. Thank you for sharing your life with us. Thank you, Kalina. Uh, I made, uh, Kalina says, I made mine with date paste, cranberries, and the ginger, and it's just lovely with mashed potatoes. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Chef AJ, uh, perpetually annoyed. I love your uh, avatar. <laughs> I sometimes feel that way. At least I did when I lived in LA. Chef AJ, what do you think about using the no salt as a substitute? Okay, so Benson's doesn't taste like salt to me. So I haven't heard things good things about it. And, and the person that is my go-to person for health would, I mean, I'm sure it probably tastes better, but I know it's a it's a thumbs down from Dr. Alan Goldhammer. So if he's, if, he, if you know, my you know, remember that commercial life cereal? Hey, Mikey, he won't eat it. He hates everything. To me, if Dr. Goldhammer won't eat it or use it, I'm probably not going to do it. Now, there's some exceptions. I do have nutritional yeast occasionally. He's not a fan. I use an air fryer. He's not a fan. But but when it comes to products like that, it's a, a chemical, so I wouldn't use it. Instead, perpetually annoyed, why don't you just maybe like take some time to go salt free completely because it takes about 30 days to neuroadapt from a salted diet to a no salt diet for the food to start 
tasting salty to you. You could be using lots of fresh herbs. You could be using things like sea vegetables. I get my smoked dulse at, sea ve at Main Coast Sea Vegetables. You can be using sour. When you hit the palate with sour, the sour taste buds sit next to the taste buds for salty. So those things can help. In Denver, making ratatouille. Oh, Denver's nice. Hey, doesn't doesn't um, Marsha live there, Jane, from our group? Maybe you can connect with her. She's great. Not not Marsha Bell, but a different Marsha. Okay, let's see if there's any other questions. Okay. So here, I have a question for you guys. And uh, please, please don't just give me the name of a museum if you haven't checked it out, because I swear for the last two years, I have written every museum in the United States and even some museums out of the country. So I have always been a big fan of Scooby-Doo. I even have a Scooby-Doo tattoo on my back. Uh, my first dog as an adult was named Scooby. He looked like Scooby. I love the cartoon Scooby-Doo. And I was collecting Scooby-Doo memorabilia for over 30 years. I thought I was going to have kids. It didn't work out. And so now I have a huge collection that costs tens of thousands of dollars that I've been storing at $100 a month. Now it's in my garage that I have a house of Scooby-Doo memorabilia. And it's on a data stick. It's on a flash drive. I can put a Dropbox link to all these Facebook pages and YouTube pages. Every museum that sees it says they love it. And they either, either get three answers. They, they either will take it, but they'll archive it, which means they're just going to store it. I can do that myself. Or they want particular pieces, which I don't want to break the setup. It's like breaking up a family. Um, or, or they don't want it. It's not a right fit for their museum. And, and so please don't just say, call this TV show, call this museum. I've done that in the last two years. So if anybody has any ideas, I'm not trying to profit from it. I mean, I'd love to get paid what it's worth. The, the Scooby-Doo collectors on the Facebook groups, again, nobody wants to buy the whole collection. And I don't know how to do eBay. And even if I did, I can't fulfill 1,500 orders. I just don't have the time. If somebody wanted to do that for me, I would pay them. But the idea is, is uh, you know, I thought there could be a Scooby Museum somewhere. This is mint condition collection of everything from the smallest button to life-size costumes. Like I said, it's taking up a third of a garage. It's beautiful. And, you know, I just wanted to go to a good home. So, you know, it, whether it be a private buyer, a store, it's, it's just, it's just so sad that it's sitting in my garage. And I have talked to every museum in the desert and pretty much in the United States. So if anybody has any idea what to do with a 1500 piece mint condition Scooby Doo collection memorabilia, let me know and I'll throw something your way for helping me out. But like I said, don't just give me the phone. I mean, I've called all, all those TV shows, antique road shows, pickers, whatever. So, okay. What are some must appliances for the kitchen? In my opinion, there's the only thing that you must have is a pressure cooker. If you check out my Amazon store, which I link to, you can get the Melfi, you can get the Instant Pot. Uh, you know, I prefer a stainless steel insert over the Cuisinart, which is nonstick, but you got to have a pressure cooker. Other than that, everything else is just, you know, it's great. I, I love the Breville air fryer. I believe it's going to go on sale tomorrow, Black Friday. I have a Vitamix and a Blendtec high powered blenders, but I could probably live without that. Probably couldn't live without a food processor though. You could try posting it on Craigslist. You know, Hmm. I just always worry about Craigslist and eBay and weird people. And, you know, I, I don't know. I, I just, I just, I wish somebody would do it for me and I just give them a finder's fee. No, these aren't new reading classes, Deborah. It's just that I, can't. okay. So the print on this new technology is so small. I can't see it. These are, these are always been the reading glasses I had, but it just coincidentally matches my shirt. So, uh, did I, yeah. Air, Kalina loves her air fryer. Me too. La 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 la, lol boomers. Uh, sometimes low energy can cause me. TS is saying sometimes being low energy can cause by not drinking enough water. That's a good point. You have to be hydrated. Absolutely. Oh, Sherry just, hey, Sherry, how are you? And how's Paul? I just made my cranberry relish for Thanksgiving. That's a good recipe. So I've got the original recipe in unprocessed that uses dates. And then some people said they couldn't use dates. So then I've got the new one that I showed you guys at the webinar. It's in the new book, Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss. If uh, Bianca says, if you work with a whole food plant-based dietitian, they recommend nuts and seeds. I should stick with eating nuts and seeds. Well, I mean, if you're not overweight, which you said you weren't, then why not eat nuts and seeds? It's just those of us that have food addictions for which those high-fat plant foods are a trigger food or the 
that don't work for our particular body genetically that, you know, there's some people that can eat a lot more fat and not be fat. But if you're fat, it's probably not you. I mean, the low fat diet never doesn't work. It's not unhealthy, but either are nuts and seeds if you can afford them in your caloric budget. Um, I would recommend, you know, flax seeds and chia seeds though myself. So let's see. Air fryer, what type? Um, well, they have the smaller ones, which are very inexpensive. I've seen them at Walmart for you know less than fifty dollars, but they don't hold very much. So I recommend the Breville if you can afford it. It's kind of expensive now. It went up from th uh, three ninety nine to four ninety nine, but you can use your coupon at Bed Bath and Beyond. That's the mother of all fryers. But the Go Wise and some of the smaller ones that are about uh, five point two quarts, three point eight is too small because you literally get one potato in. But Nutritionally yeast. Goldhammer doesn't like it because he says it's a it's not a whole food that's found in nature. It's a highly concentrated source of protein and it's high in calories. And he has literature which he freely gives people that shows about how especially people that have GI problems like Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, it's not very good for the GI of many people. And, uh, you know, I find that, you know, a sprinkle here and there for most people is fine, but a lot of people are using it like in excess, like they'll, they'll put like a whole cup, like, like they won't even be able to eat steamed vegetables with like a cup of nooch. And that's so, so he's just not a fan of it and he doesn't allow it. And I, I limit it. Like I don't, I don't purposely not eat it, but I, I don't really do those cheesy sauces. I even have a new rest, not new, but on YouTube, you can go to my one sauce video. I created a cheese like sauce without it. So, you know, when you eat it, Dr. Furman says you make sure you get unfortified. I get the Sari brand. You can look in the Amazon store, but, uh, yeah, it's just he's not, you know, I really trust him because he's do, been doing this longer and eating this clean longer than anybody for 40 years. He raised his kid this way and his kid's doing great. So I'm going to go with, uh, you know, with success. So uh, Randy says, what about nut milk makers? You know, I mean, you know, I, I think it's fine. You know, it's just honestly, Randy, you can make your own nut milk just with a blender. You can literally take oats plus water and you have oat milk. You can strain it through a through a paint straining bag. You can take raw almond butter and water. You might come and say, hi, Bailey. I'll bring Bailey up in a second and make almond butter. You can take brown rice, either cooked or raw and make brown rice milk. So, I mean, unless you're doing like the soy milk thing, which I think you can't just do with edamame and water, it's, you can just do it yourself that way. Uh, you know, you can take unsweetened dried coconut plus water and make coconut milk. So you can pretty much make every milk yourself. I just bought something called powdered almond butter. It has no added, I mean, it's been defatted. And I'm going to try to, I'm going to, maybe I'll do a video, see how that does with, with um, almond, uh, with, with making almond milk. Cause I don't want to have nut butter in the house, but I'm not going to eat anything powdered. I don't think. Marcia says, I love your new kitchen. Remember your former kitchen. <laughs> yes. I got so many, remember people would say on YouTube, that counter is disgusting. And it's like, well, tell the property management company, cause I've been here 20 years. They're not going to fix it. This tells me how I can do this way of eating. I've been plant-based for almost two months and lost 23 miles. That's incredible. Marcia should join one of my groups join them for two weeks for free we get the support that's amazing uh sherry says instead of roasting pears for the cranberry relish what do you think about oh no 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 um no don't use the jarred pears without roasting i tried that it's it's too sour that the roasting is what the roasting of the pears is what's going to make them more date like it's going to bring out those natural sugars i mean you can do it I, i'm not telling you not to do it but i did it the first time that way hoping and it's the, unless you really, really like tart, it's, it's going to be too tart for most people. It's too easy to make your own, um, yeah, it's too easy to make your own almond milk, the store stuff or stuff with nonsense. They do have brands. One is called Elmhurst Farm and one is called Three Trees. That's literally almonds and water or walnuts and water, no salt, nothing. So that's good. And let's see, the powdered almond butter sounds like the powdered peanut butter. Yeah, except that we're not supposed to eat peanuts, or at least according to Dr. Goldhammer and Dr. Campbell because of aflatoxin. But yeah, and you probably wouldn't make uh, peanut butter milk. So. Let's see what else oh, you guys. Bailey, you want to say hi? Come here. Oh, come here, Bailey. All right, I'll be right there. Gotta pick her up. Oh, okay. She is so cute. Uh, you know, this is my little heart right here. I don't know if you can see that. You know, she has a bow today because everybody keeps calling her a boy at our volunteer jobs. I don't know why. So this time, the groomer. We both got our hair. We, we try to get our hair cut the same day. Look at this bow. Is this precious? This little purple bow uh, so that we are on the same schedule about every six weeks. So 
one of the things I am most passionate about other than healthy eating is adopting and volunteering. So I get to do both. Bailey is a rescue. We got her when she was four at an animal shelter. We've had her a little over five years. She volunteers at schools, libraries, and hospitals teaching kids well, she helps kids read and she does humane education and she is the best little dog in the whole world. Uh, you love Bailey. Yeah, Bailey, uh, sending love, thanks to you and Charles. Thank you, Cheryl. Yeah, people love Bailey. She is, she's so cool. What, oh, who is the pioneer? I love these questions. Okay, this is fun. If, if you guys want to stay, I'll keep chatting. But as I mentioned, my Thanksgiving plans got derailed. I want to take these off though because I look better without them. This is my better side, left side. Right side. See, so I've got, all right. So I think that just like um, a lot of people, you know, talk about certain people as being the father of lifestyle medicine. I think that Dr. Rolls is, is the pioneer. I mean, look, a lot of people in the plant-based world teach it. Nobody cornered the market on caloric density. It's not like we can't talk about it because so-and-so talked about it. Some, some speakers feel that way. I know, but Dr. Rolls has a laboratory at Penn state university where she studies human eating behavior. And it took me, seven years to get her to do a video interview because she's kind of shy. I mean, she's not shy, but she just, you know, she's an academic and she's not a YouTube sensation and that's not what she wants to be. She's a lovely person, by the way. And she did do an interview with me that you can find on my YouTube page that was done uh, just audio. But I always wanted to interview her, you know, video. And so she has a series of best-selling books called Volumetrics or the Ultimate Volumetrics Eating Plan. I've only read her first book, but it's, it's, she didn't really, I don't know if she so much invented calorie density because whoever invented food invented the, the, the relative calories per pound of food, but she really is done more research into the field of calorie density than anybody else because she has this laboratory at Penn State University where she brings people in and she studies human eating behavior. And this is where she determined that we all humans consistently eat pretty much the same amount of food per day by weight, which is about three to five pounds of food. And it didn't matter what, what sex we were, what age we were, what country we came from. And that's why her work is so important because if she learned that, you know, people don't like eating less food than we're accustomed to, but most diets, you know, especially, you know, I, I, I'm, I am not a fan. You probably know of the weighing and measuring programs because I don't see a lot of success long-term with this. I see people that go on these weighing and measuring programs losing weight very quickly, but not, they're not able to sustain it because they're too hungry. And I see the people that are teaching the weighing and measuring programs struggling themselves or, but the thing, the idea that Dr. Barbara Wills is saying is we, we need a certain amount of food in terms of weight and volume to feel satiated to, to, and hunger to activate those stretch receptors. And so when we eat less food, we're going to be cranky, we're going to be hungry, and then eventually we're going to go off the plant. So what she teaches is that you can still eat the same amount of food, but by changing the average calorie density of the food you eat, if you do that by as little as 500 calories a pound a day, you can lose a pound a week. And so she's always doing research in her labs, mainly involving things like water. I mean, her book's fascinating. You know, she's probably published over 200 papers now. If you're a science nerd and want to read a lot about her, um, some of the research she's done in the medical literature. I know that when I knew I was going to interview her this week, which was on Tuesday, I contacted all the medical doctors I knew, like Dr. McDougall and Dr. Davis. I said, what should I ask her? I asked Dr. Lyle, what should I ask her? Because people really admire her work and what she's done. And she's a very lovely person. And uh, yeah, I mean, like I really, she's one of my heroes. I really credit her work with my ability to, at the age of 52, for the first time in my life, get thin and stay thin. And it's actually been very easy now implementing what she teaches in calorie density. And by the way, it's taught in the plant-based world all the time. You know, I mean, and it's not to say that they didn't learn it somewhere else. Not everybody necessarily learned it from Dr. Rolls, but Dr. Rolls has probably been studying it longer than anybody else or, or, or actually do it. She's the only one I know doing research on it herself. So, you know, Dean Ornish's book, which I believe he wrote in, was it 1980 called Eat More, Way Less? Well, that in a nutshell is calorie density because calorie density allows you to eat way more food and and way much less. Dr. McDougall's book, my favorite of all his books, The McDougall Program of Maximum Weight Loss, it's based in the principles of calorie density. Uh, Pritikin, the calorie density principle, uh, the full plate diet. So the books that are teaching whole food plant-based, pretty much all the programs are based in this idea of calorie density because just regular vegan just means no animal products. But most 
people that do a whole food plant-based diet are already implementing calorie density because they're already not doing oil. And oil is the most calorically dense food on the planet, 4,000 calories a pound. Anyway, I could talk about this all day because this is like my favorite subject. Hugs to Bailey. Thank you, Deb Debbie. Sending love from Australia, says Clark. Ooh, Tia signed up for the Palm Springs Conference. I cannot wait. That is something I'm going to talk about tomorrow when I introduce my um, Black Friday special. Thick vegan gives me broccoli, which I love. Uh, Bailey, what does Bailey eat? And what does Bailey eat? She eats something called V-Dog, which is a dry dog food. She eats brown rice. She eats potatoes, sweet potatoes, cooked carrots, and she does eat three ounces of chicken a day in two servings. And it's all it is is plain chicken. We tried to make her vegan and she didn't eat for four days. So she just seems to want that little bit. You remember I adopted her too. So that's what she eats. The lady's name is Dr. Barbara Rolls, R-O-L-L-S. She is always so sweet. I don't know if she was a boy or a girl. Yeah. Cause she has a unisex name. Yeah. She, yeah. People just assume she's a boy and she pees like a boy. So that makes it worse. Uh, Jennifer saying weighing and measuring never worked for me. And this works. Thank you, chef AJ. You are so welcome. Boy, people are texting me. I'll look, I'll show you my favorite sign. So if anybody's coming for Thanksgiving, you might want to have a sign like this. It's from azveg.org. So I, I don't sell them or anything, but I just have them. That was a brilliant observation she had. Yeah, Deborah, let me tell you what she said about water in just a second. I'm considering spending time at True North. Any advice? I'm a coffee addict, need two cups in the morning. Uh, I'm afraid of withdrawals. So make sure you watch the Real Truth About Weight Loss Summit and hear from Dr. Carney why caffeine is really, really bad. Uh, depending on where you live, Florence, True North has a six-month waiting list. You can get into the fasting escape with Dr. Nate Gershfeld a lot quicker. Uh, Chef, jar, you know, retro nerd, I don't recommend really anything from a jar. What jarred pasta sauce do I recommend? Then if you can find one without oil, I don't know of any that don't have sugar or salt or sugar and salt. And honestly, if just watch episode, I think it's 150 of Weight Loss Wednesday. I, it takes three minutes to make a delicious marinara in your blender. You don't have to cook it. The blender makes it hot. You throw in tomatoes and bell pepper and garlic and basil. I mean, just don't buy jarred products. It's, it's, they don't taste as good. So I, I don't really eat any processed food. I haven't in over 10 years. The, I mean, I guess the exception would be salt-free beans in a can. I do get sometimes the box plant milks that are clean and I have the salt-free mustard, the West spray, and I have the fire roasted tomatoes. Otherwise it's, you know, just make it yourself. It tastes so much better. I always get the question, how do you know you're eating enough? Does a person go by calorie density to satiation or yeah, I don't I don't count calories, Pam. So I mean, if your weight is stable, you're obviously eating enough. If your weight is increasing, you're obviously eating too much. And if your weight is going down and you're not trying to lose weight, then you're probably not eating enough. This is just this is not a problem for anybody generally that's eating whole natural food, you know, fruits, vegetables, whole grains legumes, nuts and seeds, you know, avocado when appropriate. Uh, let's see if there's anything there. Okay. Oh, so Deborah, yeah. So one of the things um, that Dr. Rolls discovered was that it was the water in food that, so water has no calories. So you can't just say, you know what, I'm just going to drink a lot of water and I'm going to lose weight because it has no calories, but it also exits the digestive tract very quickly. So water just by itself doesn't create satiety for very long. But she discovered that when water was in the food, specifically stoops bound to the food, that it created satiety because it added not only volume, but it also added weight. So this was one of her best discoveries. And that's why it's always recommended to start every meal with a soup or a salad or, you know, some steamed vegetables, fruits, something like that, because fruits and vegetables are like 90% water. Mish says, Chef AJ, do you recommend dry fat? Absolutely do not recommend dry fasting. I don't even recommend water fasting in general for people that are trying to lose weight or people that are food addicts. Water fasting is something that's done when you have a disease like high blood pressure that can't be resolved just through eating a whole food plant based diet or autoimmune disease or Crohn's or autotrophic. Absolutely. Dry fasting is very, very dangerous and I don't recommend it. Happy Thanksgiving for going. Yeah. Hey, Meredith. Well, I had not, I already, I had, believe it or not, I had an interview I had to do today. And so I figured hair was already done. I may as well, but I'm probably going to go live tomorrow to make my Black Friday announcement. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. The name of where the, okay. Yeah. So Florence, um, 
Fasting Escape, the word fasting, the word escape.com. Dr. Nate Gershfeld, it, it, it has less of a weight because he's more new. It's in your Belinda, California. You certainly can call True North. They sometimes have cancellations, but for the most part, they're booking out six months in advance. Uh, so that's it. I mean, I'll wait a couple of seconds to see if there's any more. I'm assuming that the, the video got better because you guys aren't saying anything and that the sound is okay. I've, I've got a good system now. I'm using headphones, a, a pop filter, and a pretty good mic. So thank you. Oh, Kat, uh, Kathleen says, on this Thanksgiving, I'm thankful for your program. Thank you. I texted Dr. Lyle this morning and said I was thankful for all he's done. Lucina Italia Tuscan Marinara has no sugar or oil. That's great, Cora. I'm guessing it probably has salt, which, you know, I mean, it is what it is, but that's fantastic to know. And, and I think Trader Joe's has a brand with no oil and no salt. I don't know. You, you got to look, you got to look to me. It just, you know, it just doesn't taste as good, but uh, because it's so easy to make your own. All right. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? So I'm, I'm just, it's just me and Charles and Bailey because we, we had an invitation to go to Yorba Linda, but with this torrential rain, we didn't want to be on the freeway for, you know, six hours, be three hours each way. So I'm making my recipes from my holiday webinar and we're going to see the Mr. Rogers movie after dinner. So that'll be nice catching up on work maybe doing some yoga. So that's it. Okay. Well, guys, happy Thanksgiving. And you can stay on program during this difficult holiday season. Just make sure if you're going to go off plan, make a deal with yourself to eat something healthy first. Healthy food is delicious. It can be delicious. And, uh, you know, we offer support for those of you that need it. You know, I've got I've got paid programs. I've got free programs. You have trials and maybe come back tomorrow when I announce my Black Friday special because I got something really, really good. Oh, Jennifer says, I'm going to order for a local spicery. My must haves are pepperoni and gingerbread. Their sun dried tomato powder is good. Uh, yeah, but those are was pepperoni is my favorite. Do I have a discount code for local spicery? It's not a code. It's my name, Chef AJ, and Nicholas will give you two free samples with your order. Just like with a California balsamics, two free samples with your order. Bless you back, Lisa. All right, so I'll wait one more second because I'm going to say goodbye and then there's another question. So, all right. All right. I'm glad this works. I hope it works. So let me know if I can improve it in some way. Hey, thanks for the hearts, Jody. Okay. All right, guys. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your loved ones. And remember, be kind to animals. Thanks. Bye.